Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about top 10 facts about Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. So before starting this video like this video, and subscribe to this channel for future updates. In this video, we shall be taking a look at the top 10 facts about Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. Mustafa Kemal Atatürk is the one man who you are going to see everywhere you go in Turkey. Displayed on the Turkish money on flags and in shops, and offices you will also see a statue of him in every town. It jogged my memory to tell you as I was out the other day, and there was a huge flag of him displayed next to the Turkish flag. You may spend all your holiday wondering who he is, as the Turkish people do not really talk about him that much but he was the founder of Turkey. Number 10. His title is the father of all Turks, Kemal Atatürk Turkish, Kemal, father of Turks, original name Mustafa Kemal also, called Mustafa Kemal Pasa born 1881, Salonika Greece died November 10, 1938, Istanbul, Turkey, soldier, statesman and reformer who was the founder and first president, 1923-38, of the Republic of Turkey he modernized the country's legal and educational systems, and encouraged the adoption of a European way of life with Turkish written, in the Latin alphabet and with citizens adopting European style names. One of the great figures of the 20th century Atatürk rescued the surviving, Turkish remnant of the defeated Ottoman Empire at the end of World War I. He galvanized his people against invading Greek forces who, sought to impose the Allied will upon the war-weary Turks, and repulsed aggression by British French and Italian troops. Number 9. He abolished the Islamic justice system and adopted Western justice and law methods. Secularism in Turkey defines the relationship between religion and state in the country of Turkey. Secularism was first introduced with the 1928 Amendment of the Constitution of 1924, which removed the provision declaring that the religion of the state is Islam, and with the later reforms of Turkey's first president Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, which set the administrative and political requirements to create a modern, democratic secular state aligned with Kemalism nine years after its introduction, it was explicitly stated in the second article of the then Turkish Constitution on February 5, 1937. The current constitution of 1982 neither recognizes an official religion nor promotes any. The principle of Turkish secularism more to the separation between state and religion and Atatürk, as a Turkish intellectual, sought secularism as a principle of state modernization, and progressive ideas which included not only political and government life but also the social and cultural environment of society which was still dominated by superstition dogma and ignorance. Unlike other definitions of secularism where it means separation between church and state, in Turkey the term laiklik denotes state control and legal regulation of religion. Turkey's calls for the separation of religion and the state, but also describes the state's stance as one of active neutrality. Turkey's actions related with religion are carefully analyzed and evaluated through the presidency of religious affairs. The duties of the Presidency of Religious Affairs are, to execute the works concerning the beliefs, worship and ethics of Islam enlighten the public about their religion and administer the sacred worshipping places. Number 8. He formed the Republic of Turkey in 1923. Mustafa Kemal then embarked upon the reform of his country, his goal being to bring it into the 20th century. His instrument was the Republican People's Party, formed on August 9, 1923, to replace the Defense of Rights Associations. His program was embodied in the party's six arrows, republicanism, nationalism populism, state-owned, and state-operated industrialization aimed at making Turkey self-sufficient as a 20th century industrialized state secularism and revolution. The guiding principle was the existence of a permanent state of revolution, meaning continuing change in the state and society. Number 7. He moved the capital from Istanbul to Ankara. The nationalists occupied Istanbul on October 2, Ankara was named the capital, and on October 29 the Turkish Republic was proclaimed. Turkey was now in complete control of its territory and sovereignty. He then assumed the role of commander-in-chief with total authority. He defeated the Greeks at the Battle of the Sakarya August 23 to September 13, 1921, and initiated an offensive August 26 – September 9, 1922, that pushed the Greeks to the sea at Izmir. With Anatolia rid of most of the Allies the GNA at the behest of Mustafa Kemal, voted on November 1, 1922 to abolish the Sultanate. This was soon followed by the flight into exile of Sultan Mehmed VI on November 17. The Allies then invited the Ankara government to discussions, that resulted in the signing of the Treaty of Lausanne on July 24, 1923. This treaty fixed the European border of Turkey at the Maritza River in eastern Thrace. 
Number 6. He made it law that women could wear their own choice of clothing. Women in Turkey are women who live in or are from Turkey. Turkey gave full political rights to women including the right to elect, and be elected locally in 1930, nationwide in 1934. According to the right, Turkish women have gained to the elect and elected rights before many European countries, women such as France, Italy and Greece provided by Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. Article 10 of the Turkish constitution bans any discrimination, state or private on the grounds of sex. It is the first country which had a woman as the president of its constitutional court. Article 41 of the Turkish constitution reads that the family is based on equality between spouses. The Turkish feminist movement began in the 19th century during the decline of the Ottoman Empire when the Ottoman Welfare Organization of Women was founded in 1908. The ideal of gender equality was embraced after the declaration of the Republic of Turkey by the administration of Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, whose reforms included a ban on polygamy and the provision of full political rights to Turkish women by 1930. Number 5. He introduced the language known as Turkish by adopting the Latin. Atatürk himself was personally involved with the commission, and proclaimed an alphabet mobilization to publicize the changes. He toured the country explaining the new system of writing, and encouraging the rapid adoption of the new alphabet. The language commission proposed a five-year transition period Atatürk saw this, as far too long and reduced it to three months. The change was formalized by the Turkish Republic's law number 1353, the law on the adoption and implementation of the Turkish alphabet passed on 1 November 1928. Starting 1 December 1928, newspapers, magazines, subtitles in movies, advertisement and signs had to be written with the letters of the new alphabet. From 1 January 1929, the use of the new alphabet was compulsory in all public communications as well the internal communications of banks and political or social organizations. Books had to be printed with the new alphabet as of 1 January 1929 as well. The civil population was allowed to use the old alphabet in their transactions, with the institutions until 1 June 1929 in the Sanyak of Alexandretta which was at that time under French control and would later join Turkey, the local Turkish language newspapers adopted the Latin alphabet only in 1934. Number 4. Ali Reza died when Mustafa was 7 years old but he nevertheless had a significant influence on the development of his son's personality. At Mustafa's birth, Ali Reza hung his sword over his son's cradle, dedicating him to military service. Most important Ali Reza saw to it that his son's earliest education was carried out in a modern secular school rather than in the religious school would have preferred. In this way Ali Reza set his son on the path of modernization. This was something for which Mustafa always felt indebted to his father. Number 3. There was a good deal of political dissent in the air at the War College, directed against the despotism of Sultan Abdul Hamid II. Mustafa Kemal remained aloof from it until his third year, when he became involved in the production of a clandestine newspaper. His activities were uncovered but he was allowed to complete the course graduating, as a second lieutenant in 1902 and ranking in the top 10 of his class of more than 450 students. He then entered the General Staff College graduating in 1905 as a captain, and ranking fifth out of a class of 57 he was one of the empire's leading young officers. Number 2. Mustafa Kemal and Ali were sent to the Fifth Army in Damascus, where Mustafa Kemal was angered by the way corrupt officials were treating the local people. Becoming involved again in anti-government activities, he helped found a short-lived secret group called the Society for Fatherland and Freedom. Nevertheless, in September 1907 Mustafa Kemal was declared loyal, and reassigned to Salonika which was awash with subversive activity. He joined the dominant anti-government group the Committee of Union and Progress, CUP, which had ties to the nationalist and reformist Young Turk movement. Number 1. 10th of November of every year is Mustafa Kemal Atatürk Day. Atatürk Memorial Day isn't a public holiday. Still, it deserves a place in this list because if you are traveling to Turkey on November 10th, you will most probably witness the whole country in a moment of silence. Every year at 9.05 a.m. on November 10 public life comes to a halt. You may take this quite literally as cars stop in the middle of the road public transport stops, the people stand up and sirens roar to pay tribute to Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, hence Atatürk Memorial Day. He died on November 10, 1938, from cirrhosis of the liver. What do you think of our list? Which of the following facts in the list you find most amazing? Do let us know in comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.